want to do a video here about run capacitors and trying to figure out possibly why they go bad. This capacitor was just four years old, is on a carrier unit, and it was reading 2 UF and like 20 UF. So both of the capacitors were going bad. So I ordered an exact new one, exact same capacitor, and I'm gonna open both of them up just basically like opening up a tin can and let's pull them apart and see what the differences are. So right off the bat, they both look similar. There's the fan capacitor. The oil's castor oil, so there's no big deal touching it. Shouldn't drink it though. And there's the compressor capacitor, the big one. Look inside the cans. I mean, looking inside the cans, you see a little bit of kind of waxy substance, and the oil looks a little more waxy on the bad one. It's pulled apart further. Now, these are the good ones. Now, notice on the bad ones, both of them are showing arcing inside the layers. So it bulged out right there and this one's bulging out right here versus no bulging on the new one. So let's start unwinding them and see what we get. So on the good capacitor, it's unwinding it. It's very long. It's a very thin layer of plastic and it's aluminized. And notice it has a transparent side to it and then the aluminum goes all the way to the end. So basically they roll it up and then they use solder blob, molten, molten tin or something and it basically just attaches itself to the aluminum and then you get a capacitor is two parallel plates. You could make it out of sheet metal. You know, two big pieces of sheet metal, have an air gap between them, there's a capacitor. The value would be very low though. So these are made by having a single layer of aluminum on top of a layer of plastic. And it's quite close. The thickness of the plastic is probably related to the voltage rating, which on these we're only 370 volt. I like to do the 440 volt. You get a little better insulator. But the failure that it has, it basically starts arcing through the insulator. This is really not unrolling because it's basically melted. This is a 5, it's reading a 2, and because of the damage where it's melted. This was a 30, it actually was reading 25 and the damage isn't as severe but right there it's melted so the failure mode on these things is the thickness of the plastic and if somebody knows a capacitor that lasts longer then uh, as i've seen all the brands going bad ge particularly bad this isn't a ge but i remember in the 80s when I started the business the capacitors used to be much bigger and they never went bad I never had a bad capacitor throughout the 80s and the 90s even it's they just started going bad when they started getting really small like this so this stuff is really thin it handles current because there's a lot of it but when it starts arcing, you know, it destroys itself. So same thing here, they roll it up, then they stick it in molten metal, and the metal sticks to one side, which has a, a gap, because it's, there's two layers, and uh, it's basically a, two long sheets with one conductor on each side. 
so I can't see anything, you know, mounting this thing or anything. They're just, they're gonna go bad. Probably power spikes are probably the main culprit. But I thought it was unusual that both of these were bad on the same capacitor. And uh, so maybe the same power spike got them both. You can verify when you put a capacitor in, check the voltage. If you're over 440 volts, that capacitor is going to blow out really fast. If you put a larger capacitor in, the voltage tends to spike higher. So whatever you take out, if you take out a 30, make sure you put back in a 30. Or if you're going to do something else, check your voltage. They tell you to go oversized, but that raises the voltage. I usually always have the capacitor. So I don't worry about that, but going undersized will lower the voltage and then probably give you a little longer life because the voltage gets high enough where it arcs through the plastic and then it starts degrading itself, you know, until eventually the capacitor overheats and blows its top or it unsolders. It'll unsolder one of the wires in there and then go totally open. So anyway, that's the failure mode that we all see on these run capacitors. Actually, if you want to get a capacitor that lasts longer, I don't think they're available in the duals, so you got to split it up. But you go to your 660 volt capacitors, and they get to be quite a bit bigger. It's three inch by four inch tall. They're going to have a thicker plastic, and that's the failure that's going on. So there's tons of them on the internet and I'm usually like right here and show your voltages. So 660 is the highest voltage. I mean capacitors can go up into thousands of volts if you get in the industrial stuff. But uh, if you got a unit that just kills capacitors one after the next, stick a 660 in there. You could probably use a regular one for the fan and the problem should be solved. I hope you like watching the video. Thanks for watching.